Hello and welcome back to a tutorial series about the Godot engine and the Godot native script written in Rust. In the last videos we were mostly focusing on basic interaction with Rust and Godot as well as debugging and also how we can actually improve our development workflow. However, let's look into a more sophisticated example. So let's build this kind of platformer you are just seeing currently on the screen. This is a pet project of mine where I use a total different technology stack, but let's try to rebuild a similar experience within Godot. So I created therefore a new Godot project. And because we are looking into a 2D game, we actually need a 2D scene. So before we actually do anything from the coding perspective, let's first create a simple level layout. So therefore we create a new tile map and the tile map of course consists of several tile sets. So therefore let's create a new tile set. You click on it and now we need also our image representing the individual tiles. The image contains all the individual tile sets, what we want to use. So therefore let's drag and drop them into the Godot engine. Next, we also need to make some modification for the file import. First of all, filters should be disabled. This ensures that they are even looking good when they get scaled up. We need to press re-import to make the changes available. And next let's change After back to our time map, select it, and then we press the button directly on the tile set. Add a new image by pressing the plus icon. And now we can start doing the rasterization of our tile set. Therefore, let's press the button new single tile. Make the grid available by pressing the button. And now you can actually start modifying your tile set as required. I use, I use 32 to 32 resolution of each individual tile set cell. And then let's save our tileset scene under this tileset name. And now let's just create single tiles for each cells, what we require. So therefore you press just single tile, mark your individual tile and hit, depending on your operating system, um, command S for saving it. And as you can see, all already saved single tiles are marked in yellow and you save them by the shortcut or directly by using the icons. Now let's select the tile map within the scene and as you can see we already have here our tile sets on the right hand side and you also can see on the screen we have this kind of grid already available. However we need to modify the tile size for the grid itself. So that's why we change the cell size to 32 to 32. Now they are fitting perfectly our tile set. And now we are ready to do our basic map layout using our previously stored tiles. Once we have completed our background, we can now place our individual static platforms where later on the character can move. Sometimes it's required for tiles to be flipped or rotated. Therefore use these top bar buttons in order to turn or change the rotation of each individual tile. This makes it very comfortable and easy to reuse existing defined tile sets. Our first platform is almost done. And now by using the toolbar, we can actually turn, flip or rotate it as required and therefore give our level kind of a nice look and feel already. Next, let's save our changes and also save our scene and select it afterwards. And now we should see in the Godot example window already our level. Thank you for watching. See you next time where we start finally implementing some basic game mechanics for an upcoming character in Rust.